You can't fly if you're high. The American Lung Association. You're watching KBTX TV, Channel 3. Oh, here she comes now. Cyrus, honey, forgive me. I didn't mean to take so long. Oh, that's all right. You're always worth the wait, darling. <laughs> Gentlemen, my wife, Deidre Miller. Deidre, I'd like you to meet Sam Clegg and his son, Jordy, the father-son team of Clegg Industries. It's lovely to meet you. It's a pleasure, Mrs. Miller. <laughs> it was, uh, very much worth the wait. <laughs> uh, honey, I wasn't just primping. I was on the phone with our hotel trying to find another suite. You wouldn't believe the tacky rooms they gave us. Looking over an alley, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be Washington's number one hotel. Why bother with a hotel when you can stay with us? Oh, no, I, we, we couldn't invite You're perfectly thing. welcome. We've got plenty of room, haven't we, Jordy? Yeah, just your standard 15-bedroom house. <laughs> well, in that case... It was that serious, Thomas? Not was, is. She's been dependent on drugs since the miscarriage. That dependency won't go away overnight. But that was over a year ago. How could that have happened without my knowing it? First, no one realized that she was on the drugs. Then she got very good at hiding it. None of us knew. And my going away made it worse, didn't it? Her being alone was not good, Tyler. Well, she's not going to be alone anymore. I'm back, and I'm going to take real good care of her. I am sure you will, but she is... She needs more help than you realize. She's still very sick. Yeah, and the withdrawal was very hard on her. Well, too. that was only the beginning. Okay, Thomas, tell me what I've got to do. All right, well, first, you got to keep an eye on her. you got to keep her away from pills. And then you got to try and talk her into seeing a psychiatrist. Okay. Okay, I will, and maybe Trey's good news will help her out, too. What good news? Well, there's a real good chance we may be able to adopt a baby soon. How'd that come about? Well, Trey heard that Paula's lawyer, Austin Sinclair, heard about this baby that was going to be available for private adoption, and Julie went and talked to Sinclair, and it looks like they were in the running for this thing. What's wrong, Thomas? You don't look exactly thrilled about this whole thing. I know how much Julie wants a baby. It's just the timing that bothers me. I don't think she's ready for a baby right now. I don't know what you're talking about, Thomas. I am too ready for a baby. I'm ready for one right now. What is it, Helen? You don't look too well. I've come to plead my case before the court of last resort. You. I want you to stop seeing Kelly. She told you about us? Yes. Good Lord, Trey. Haven't you heard that girl enough? Hurting Kelly is the last thing I want to do. Then stop seeing her. It's not that easy, Hal. We love each other. We want to be together. But think of the consequences, not only to Kelly and Scotty, but to you, too. I can't argue this with you, okay? You've got all the shoulds on your side. All we've got is our love. Then what about your wife? Don't you love her? Yes, of course. And I hope to gosh she never finds out. Look, up to now, it's been our secret. Kelly's and mine. And if we keep it that way, no one will find out. But you haven't helped by coming here. I mean, Myrna's no fool. I mean, she'll figure out why you came here, and then... <laughs> then what? What do you think she can do? Your guess is as good as mine. Myrna is one of the most unpredictable women I know. If I can do anything to make Kelly's life more difficult... Oh, oh well, what is it? I... I can't seem to get my, my breath. Okay, okay, well, what can I do? Thomas, please call Thomas. Okay, uh, just don't move. Uh, university... University Hospital, Dr. McCandless. Thomas McCandless, it's an emergency. This is Congressman Clegg. Please hurry!
Then for three or four hours, all you had is sun, which I personally guarantee. Oh, well. Julie, you're hospitalized for good reason, and you left against your doctor's better judgment. I want to go back. This is the only medicine I need right here. Sweetheart, Thomas is only concerned about you. We all are. I don't think he was saying that you're going to have to go back to the hospital. No, because I know you tried to throw me out of here if I ever suggested it. But, Thomas, Julie, you're still sick. I, look, if something's wrong with me, I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. You need more than good intentions. Yeah, Julie. You need real help. We were just talking about that. Maybe you should try seeing a therapist. I'll see a therapist. I'll see one five times a week if I have to. I want to be a healthy woman, a healthy mother for my baby, but... You do believe me, don't you? Yes, I do, Julie. And I will be there rooting for you all the way. Thank you. <laughs> now, see what you do to me? <laughs> I'm gonna see what this is about. You believe me, don't you? I want to get well, and I will. Of course I do. Julie, why don't you start that new health program right now and go on upstairs and get some sleep? I'm fine. I'm, I'm just fine. But, Julie, you hadn't had any sleep tonight. I know, but this is your first night home, and I just want to sit up with you and talk and have some hot chocolate and spend time. And we have so much to talk about. Anything wrong, Thomas? Yeah, an emergency. Ariel, why do I get the feeling we've been talking about everything except the real reason why you asked me to meet you tonight? Because I don't like confrontations, for starters, Charity. Is that what we're going to have? A confrontation? Why don't we call it a discussion? Ed said he saw you here. You asked him point blank about Victor Markham. Yes, I did. But Charity, let me tell you what's really bothering me. I have a feeling that you think Ed had something to do with Glenn's death. Am I right? I haven't got enough pieces of puzzle to answer that yet. But I, I certainly hope he didn't. Well, Charity, of course he didn't. I mean, Ed has got his faults. Lord knows he's got a roving eye, but he would never be the knowing cause of anyone's death. I'm not accusing anyone, Ariel. Charity, let this rest. Can't you let the past bury itself? No, I can't, especially now. Charity, I don't like the way this sounds. Ed told me something very interesting about Victor Markham. What? Did you know that he said Diamond's father-in-law? Small world to coin a phrase. Charity, I won't do anything for a while. Unfortunately, he's out of the country, but when he gets back, I'm going to get to know a great deal more about Mr. Diamond. I still don't get it, Sam. What, Cyrus? Why a giant conglomerate like Clegg Industries is so hot to get a little company like mine? Because you built it into a first-class operation, and it fills a niche in my corporate structure. <laughs> I'm afraid you're the one who doesn't get it, Sam. You could spend the rest of your life answering all of Sy's questions, and he still wouldn't be satisfied. The real problem here is that my dear, beloved husband does not want to retire. <laughs> well, I can understand that. Hey, Mr. Miller, think about it. Retirement. Seems to me it's the start of the good life. Tell this to my husband. Well, think about it. I mean, traveling the world in your own luxury yacht, that sounds like the start of the good life to me. Sounds like the lazy life and boring. Listen, do you folks mind if Dieter and I skip dessert? Not feeling well, Cyrus? No, oh, never felt better. But I've got some important telephone calls to make tonight, and uh, I don't want to let it get too late. Do you mean that we are not going anywhere after dinner? Sure. Back to the hotel, pack. I'll make my calls, and then to the Clegg house. Wait a minute. This is my first trip to Washington. And I'm not going to spend it in a mansion or in a hotel suite. Honey, I have read about Washington since I was a child, and I want to see those monuments all lit up. Listen, I've got an idea. Cy, si, why don't you make your phone calls? Jordy, maybe you can drive Deirdre around and show her the sights. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I, I know Washington like the back of my hand. As a matter of fact, if I wasn't working for my father now, I'd probably be driving one of those tour buses. <laughs> well, it looks like we've... Solved our problem. Uh, and we were talking, and suddenly Hal sat down and couldn't speak. Is it his heart? Oh, the paramedics don't think so. They're getting him ready for the ambulance now. 
Is he breathing easily? No, better than before. And his color is back. Oh, thank God. I never dreamed he'd go to see you. I'm coming into the hospital, you know. Uh, what about Scotty? Well, my neighbor's back. I'm going to ask her to stay here. Uh, Kelly, I I've got to see her. Will you call me after you leave the hospital? I don't think Please, that... please, please. Because we have to talk. Why? What's the matter? What did Hal say no, to you? No, it's not Hal. It's, it's Myrna. What about her? Well, she was here when Hal arrived. Uh, she saw him. Listen, I, I have to go now. Uh, call me after the hospital and I'll meet you. Okay, bye. Where's Hal? Over there. Go ahead. Good, strong, and decaffeinated. I want it all. Introducing... Rich in nutrition, it's like getting a multivitamin in every can. Thomas, I have nothing to say. It's important. So is my patient. Are you going to come with us? I'll follow you in my car, Joe. You take good care of him in the ambulance. I'm worried about it. Got it, Doc. All right, Trey. Take it fast. Well, it's something we never did settle. And slugging me at Mario's was no answer. All right, what's the question? Are you going to tell someone about Kelly and me? really got you shaking. Just answer me, yes or no. <laughs> it's tempting. Boy, is it tempting. But the bottom line is, I care too much about slowing the breaker. All right, I'll let you do that yourself. Hey. I am not going to hurt Sloan, okay? Aren't you? Trey, you're married to a very smart lady. Now, how long is it going to take for her to find out about it from someone else or for her to figure it out for herself? Now, what are you going to do then? I believe you've got a patient waiting for you, McCandless. Oh, my love, you have no idea how long I've dreamed of this. Hot chocolate? Yeah, hot chocolate. <laughs> and making love to you and just spending time with you like this. Mm. Well, baby, we're going to be together for the rest of our lives. But right now, I think it's a good idea for both of us to go upstairs and get some sleep. Would you... You know, you really shouldn't worry about me so much. Now, listen, Thomas said you really needed your sleep, Julie. I said you shouldn't worry. Now, look. Am I not the, the picture of a healthy, contented wife, happy? Huh? That's what I thought before. Um... Julie, sweetheart, I'm really it's sorry. Okay. I shouldn't it's have okay. It's okay. I will admit that I took too many pills. I needed them. You're home now. I'm never going to have to take another pill ever again. Thomas said that you've been taking these pills for over a year. Julie, how come you didn't tell me how depressed and upset you were? Why couldn't you talk to me? I tried to at first. I, I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to worry you. Julie, I love you. You are the most important thing in my life. Listen, didn't we make a promise to each other that we wouldn't keep any secrets? We did. And that includes whatever's bothering you. Julie, promise me from now on that you'll tell me whatever it is. Okay, I, I, I promise. But Tyler, everything's going to be just great for us, especially after we get the baby. Now, could we just stop talking about poor Julie's health? Because it's so boring. Not right now. There's just one more thing, sweetheart. What? My mother said something about Visions. Oh, that. Yeah, everybody thought I was crazy. No, she didn't say you were crazy. Well, I don't know what you want to call it, honey, but I did see things. It was as if I could see everything that was happening to you. Well, tell me about it. What, what did you see? Go ahead. Uh, I saw uh, a bell tower and... Uh, a large old book, like a, a registry. And then um, a crucifix, a, a wooden crucifix. And one night I woke up and there was a monk at the foot of my bed and I saw a grave, which is why I thought that you might be dead. <clears throat> Tyler, were any of those visions true? Well, um, yes, in a way. Julie, I... I was looking for Victor Markham. 
See, he was last seen in that monastery somewhere in Austria. You were the one that found that out, remember? Yeah. Well, don't you see? This all makes sense. Somehow your subconscious or, or whatever it was put all those things together and, and brought all these images to your mind. No, no, no. It, it was so real. Well, I'm, I'm sure they were real, Julie, because of the drugs. No, then why don't you tell me what really happened so that I can know the difference between what's real and what I imagined? All right, all right. When I got to that monastery in Austria, had been taken over by a man named Corso. He and a few of, of his men were hiding out there. So what did you do? I disguised myself as a Benedictine monk and asked them for a shelter for the night. Did they let you in? <laughs> yes, they did, but I got a lot more than I was bargaining for. Someone saw through my, dis my disguise, and I stayed there longer than I wanted to as an involuntary guest in one of their cells. You mean they, they held you prisoner? What were they going to do to you? I don't know. I never found that out because two other visitors showed up on the scene at the monastery and blew it wide open. Great timing, Captain. Friends of yours, Diamond? No. I don't bet the Austrian police know. Nick! Max! Where are you? Tyler, you... You could have been killed. Thank God it's all over. It's a fact of life, Bowser. People do have their... Destroying their lives on Guiding Light, weekdays. And this monument here is to President Polk. It's affectionately known as The Rock. That's the monument, not Polk. And it is made of uh, genuine Indian marble and chiseled by Latvian immigrants. And inside is portraits of all the uh, noted republics. You are making all of this up. That's not true, ma'am. You have to be talking to... Someone who knows nothing about monuments. <laughs> you fraud. I'm guilty. It's charged. But you wanted to see Washington, and I certainly didn't want to disappoint you. Plus, your father thought it would probably be a great idea to work on me separately. Well, I'll fair in love, war, and big business, right? A motto to live by. A motto I learned on my father's knee. Well, your father was probably right. You'll do a lot better talking to me than you will my husband. Oh, yeah? How come? Cyrus usually does what I tell him to. I see. Well, then, how can I persuade you to persuade him to take my father's offer? I'll think of something. Now, how about if you show me the Lincoln Memorial? That is, if you can find it. Trey. Well, I was only able to see him for a couple of minutes, and he was so heavily sedated that he didn't even know I was there. But Thomas said he's going to be all right. What did Myrna say when she saw him? Nothing. She just gave one of her raised eyebrow looks and then left. You know she's going to ask questions. I mean, she associates Hal with me and Scotty. What are you going to tell her? I'll think of something. But not now. But I thought that's why you wanted to see me. Maybe. But now that you're here... All I want is to make love to you. That's what I want to. We can't. We can't go back to my house. The woman who's taking care of Scotty's gonna stay there tonight. We don't have to go back there. Well, where then? We I, can't... I know of some cottages uh, at a place called Moon Lake. It's about an hour's drive from here, but it would be like a million miles away. We can go there now mm. and take tomorrow off and. Uh, Maybe never come back. How's that sound? Like heaven. Thank you. Charlie, I still don't understand. Glenn Marriott died years ago. Why are you just now starting to ask questions? Now, after all these years? Oh, I'd have asked them if I had any idea that somebody was holding back the truth. I thought it was a tragic accident. That's why I went to Europe, Ariel, to get as far away from his memory as I could. You know, we really lost touch with each other, didn't we, when you were away all those years? I always wondered how it was for you. There were good days and bad days. Did you work? Sure, I had to support myself. Doing what? Just what I do here, the art world. Interesting enough, I ran into someone 
I knew in Europe, an old associate, someone I never thought I'd ever see again. It's funny how life has a way of just keep folding back on you. Oh, Charity, I, I know you're going back through all this because you don't really believe that Glenn Marriott died in an accident. So what exactly do you believe happened? It's obvious. Murder. I could always count on you for a straight answer, couldn't I? And on that note, I think I'm gonna go. Ed should be finished with his meeting by now. Oh, Charity, put that away. I invited you. Good luck with the sleuthing. Thanks. Gonna need it. Can I get you anything else, Miss Blake? No, thank you. Uh, do you know when Mr. Diamond will be back from his trip abroad? I'm afraid I don't. Thank you. Charity Blake is quite a woman. You can say that again, Giorgio. Mr. Diamond, what happened to you? Uh, I'll tell you my war stories later. Right now, I would like today's special and a tall, cold beer. I'll be in my office. Musk, just a hint of it. Musk, so mysterious. Nothing. This is CBS.